uh, and uh, explanation video for the roadmap and feature request template that is available uh, at nocodehq.com. And we'll just go through the page in general and then take a look at the editor so you, it's, it's easier for you to set up the template and get going as fast as possible. So uh, what you're seeing right now is basically the, the main page of the roadmap and feature request template. And we have an image here uh, which you can modify, of course, a title, a subtitle, and um, basically um, a key. So all the fields or all the um, feature requests that have a yellow um, shape at the side are new requests, the green ones are accepted requests, and the red ones are rejected requests, um, and you can modify the colors and so as well. And then we have a repeating group here um, in a nice material design um, with a list of all the feature requests that were um, submitted by your users, and they're sorted by the number of upvotes. And um, in order to upvote, users have to be logged in. Okay, so. Um, I have logged in now right now, so if I'm going to click on a, a field to upvote, the number is going to be increased by one, as you can see, and we had an alert that is shown. And um, these fields are sorted um, by upvotes. Also, um, users can only submit a feature request if they're logged in, so I'm going to click on new, and a new, uh, I can submit a new feature request. So for example, let's say um, send grid support, that's something a user wants to see for your app, and you click submit, an alert is shown. And the send grid support um, feature request is shown as well with one upvote, which is of course the user um, that submitted the feature request. And the default um, um, status of the feature request is new request um, until an admin changes the status of that request. So that's basically it for the main page. Let's go to the admin page now. Um, uh, users have to be admins uh, to access this page. And basically the admin panel is very simple. You could modify the design, add more fields. But what it does, it has a repeating group here as well as a, a drop down here where you as an admin can change the status of any kind of um, um, feature request. So for example, the SendGrid, SendGrid support feature request that was just um, um, submitted, let's say that's something we don't want to develop. So let's uh, change it to rejected. And if we now go back to the main feature request page, we can see, okay, send grid support was rejected. And um, yeah, that works quite well. Uh, just to show you uh, how it looks if you're logged out. So let's log out, out of our account. And um, if a user isn't logged in and wants to upvote um, a feature request, the sign up and login pop-up is shown. And the same thing applies for when he clicks on new. And of course, also when he clicks this button. And yeah, that's basically it regarding the template. Let's take a look at the editor now. So um, I'm in live mode right now. Let's go to development. And basically you have two pages, the admin and the index page. Let's start off the index page and uh, should be familiar now after seeing the template itself. We have our image here. You can change the image by just clicking here and uploading um, whatever image you want, maybe the logo of the company. We have a title here, a text that you can change as well as font size, uh, color, font type, and so on. Same applies for this text. We also have a group here. Um, with the different, um, um, basically the statuses, new requests, accepted and rejected. You can change the color if you want by just clicking on this group here and just changing the color here to whatever you like. Um, however, what you also want to do then, you want to also change the color here in a repeating group. We have this uh, invisible group and this, this invisible group has three conditionals and it basically has when the parent group's feature status is new, this color, the color should be this, which is the same as this color. If it's accepted, it should be this color, and if it's rejected, it should be the red color. So you would have to change the color here and here as well. Um, yeah. Um, let's go to the data tab quickly. We just have a um, feature data type, which is um, which was added. Uh, it contains a status, of course. Default is new. Then we have accepted and rejected. We have the title, basically, which is the content of the feature request, the actual feature request, and the number of upvotes, which is a number. And we have um, the user data type. Uh, the user type data type has a hierarchy, and you want to set the hierarchy to admin if the user um, is an admin, a name of the user, and an up upvoted data field, which is a list of features that this user upvoted. And this basically keeps track of uh, whether or not a user has already upvoted a feature request and to prevent him or her from uh, upvoting it again. So, yeah, we have a repeating group here. This repeating group searches for features within the database. It sorts um, 
by the number of upvotes descending. So the highest ones, the one with the highest upvotes are shown first. And just the, each group within the repeating group, basically it displays the title, um, the status as you saw before. This is the uh, number of upvotes, so parent groups features upvotes. And this is an icon, arrow up icon. And when this icon is clicked, we have um, a workflow running. So basically we want the sign up login pop-up to be shown when the current user isn't logged in. Um, uh, we, and then if the current user is logged in, and if, he, and, and if the current upvote is not already contained, so he hasn't already upvoted, and we want to show the alert you have successfully upvoted, we want to make a change to the current uh, feature, and we want to add one to the, the number of upvotes, and we want to make a change to the user, we want to add the currently upvoted, basically the, the currently upvoted feature to the list of upvoted features. And once the user goes through this workflow, um, it won't run again because we have this conditional everywhere which says the current user has to be logged in and the current user's upvoted list doesn't contain the parent group's feature. So if the user has already upvoted, he won't be able to upvote it again. We have our button here. Um, um, our button, uh, when clicked, again, shows a pop-up um, when the current user isn't logged in. Uh, Sorry, when the current user isn't logged in, it shows this uh, sign up login pop up. And when he is logged in, um, it is shown the pop up A, which is the feature request. This is a multi line input where users can enter new feature requests. And when uh, him or her clicks the submit button, we create a new feature. The status is new, the title is whatever is in the input, the number of upvotes is one. We reset all inputs, we hide the pop up, we make changes to a user, and obviously add um, the, the the, one, the feature we just created to list of upvotes and we show an alert as well. That's it regarding the index page. Let's go to the admin page now and on the admin page it's quite similar again. Um, we have a um, title here, we have a repeating group which searches for features and the only different thing is we have this drop down here which um, allows auto binding on the parent element thing. So um, whatever this drop down is changed to it, it automatically changes the status of the current features um, group within the repeating group and this is only possible because we added a privacy rule so if you go to data privacy under feature we have the privacy rule that when the current user's hierarchy is admin he should be allowed an auto binding on the status field and uh, only if he or she is admin and we also have a workflow implemented so if you go to workflow so when the page is loaded the users should be redirected to the index page if their hierarchy is not admin. So this should prevent any unauthorized access. So yeah, that's basically it regarding um, the setup and the editor of this uh, roadmap template. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and um, good luck building your application.